Hi, uh, Mark Casey here from Tough Group, along with my, my good mate Steve. And we're going to have a look at this really nice Hilux uh, dual cab that we've been working on all week. Um, shout out initially to Trademot for these really cool um, shirts that we have at Tough on a Friday. And this is to support um, better mental health. So shout out to them, but also a bit of remember to thank Trent, our chief fitter on this job, and all the boys who made this fan these fantastic products here at our factory. So, Steve, over to you. You're the yeah. accessory expert yeah. on this really nice um, it is, canopy and it is, slider. It? Yeah, it's a nice dual cab Hilux, this one. So, um, the client basically went all out with this one. So, again, um, one of the dog box and fridge box. So, you can see that up there. Um, again, we're manufactured here locally in Toowoomba, all made in-house. Um, it's got the little fridge stand. Um, it's got the Clearview Easy Slide in this one. Um, again, it's a drop-down slide, so it just makes it easier to access the yeah. fridge, especially when you're up on angles like this. Um, basically, all made out of alloy. So it's all structural grade alloy as well, complemented by obviously the tray underneath it too. So this is our outback tray. Um, it's got the little mini post here too, so basically if the client wants to get into the drop side here, it's nice, simple, got access to the side. So. Really just notice with the clear views that they're really strongly, like very well made. They are. Um, I don't know how much extra you're paying, but clearly you obviously you pay for what you get, but yep. there's another 150 or 200 bucks. I don't know, I just really, I think they really yeah. look like a nice product. Definitely, exactly. And anti-rattle as well, so there's no rattles in any of it. Yeah. Um, nice and easy to get into. So travel lock, two slides, and then you just simply pull it out. One of the best things with Clearview is once you've pulled it out and you've got a fridge full, the drop slide can't go anywhere. You physically got to pull the trigger in, then it will then drop the fridge down for That's you. That's neat. Is there so. any beers in there? <laughs> Don't it's tempt not, me. It's not cold yet. <laughs> Friday. It's just, again. yeah, it, like the thickness of the material. It just, yeah. Very robust, yeah. yeah. That's right. Like you want these things to last a few years and to, not to fall apart when you're out camping. Yeah, that's, that's the slide you go. Obviously with the fridge in there, so and the dual battery runs the fridge obviously, but we'll get to that later on. Um, you can see in there we've got a nice double port SIG socket, so obviously one angle socket, one accessory socket. So the angle socket, it just sort of, it's, your fridge screws into it and locks into the uh, socket, yeah. rather than a standard socket where they just vibrate, vibrate and melt it, yeah. and all the rest of it. Um, obviously being a dog box, it is removable too, so on the other side you can see the, the Anderson plug connection. Yeah, I just um, got that here. Yep, very neat. Correct, so and then we obviously run eight mil twin core down. Um, it's all P-clamped to the front of the tray and down up underneath, just so, because zip ties don't last 10 minutes. So we've got the, the Outback tray, which is a heavy duty tray, which we're known for. Yes. Well, which are, with, with the, the canopy's alloy, yep. so that's gonna save you a bit of, a bit of um, weight. A bit of weight, But yep. it's, pretty, it's pretty thick. Yes. Also, I like the way we, we do these, um, the, the strut plates. They're, you can adjust them, but they're also quite strong because there's a fair bit on that particular structure there. That's right, yeah. And it gives, you know, versatile too for, you know, if clients want the door not to come up as high or if they want it to drop down a bit lower. So, yeah, the adjustability is there to be yeah, able to do sure. it. So, so that's um, it. Would you want to go over to the, have a look at the other side of the toolboxes? Yeah, definitely. So, so you've got our tapered toolboxes, so 600 mil tapered, um, lockable, of course. So, keys. We just wanted to comment on these nice LEDs that really, they really dress up the tough trays really well. Bit of bling. Yeah. A bit of bling, they look good. Definitely. And what, what about the other side, or is it pretty much? We've got the storage box. So that's, you know, nice roomy area there for, you know, your, your swag and blankets and. Yeah, you can put the kids in there if you. <laughs> Definitely. You have to, probably a bit of ventilation <laughs> you need as well. But. Exactly right. Um, we've got the 600 mil tapered toolbox on this side as well, as, along with the other short drop sides. So, just again, clients got access to the back of the tray. I don't know what this, whether this client is doing, but some clients, when they take the toolbox off, they can have another little um, setup so they've got a full, a full lamp um, side, or they can have a half side can go Yeah, there. that's right. It doesn't the, look like he's set up for this one. That's right. Now the client really wants to keep this on all the time. Yeah, but. Again, we've, we've, we've got the Anderson plug there, should he ever need to remove it for any reason. So. And this is all, um, we blast all our, our material, both the steel and the alloy, with an abrasive blast material garnet to get off mill scale any imperfections in oil. And then we use our own particular primer, which is very high in zinc. And we use that on this, the steel and the alloy 
but that gives us the best finish. By sandblasting, it's, we feel it's, it's better than acid etch. It gives you that key, that profile for your powder to get into. Yep. And then we put the, um, the top coat on top of that. So you're getting that really good um, corrosion resistance and the finish will stay strong. That's right. And powder coat, three and a half times stronger than paint. You can't go wrong, can you? Yeah. And it's grown pretty thick. We, we use a gauge to check it each time to make sure that we get enough of uh, dry film thickness. Yeah, just going to the front of the vehicle here, we've got a tough bull bar. If you'd like to take us through, Steve. And yeah, then definitely. We can comment on the Genesis lights, and then we'll, we'll look into the, some really cool stuff that the boys at Trent has done with the dual battery system. Definitely, for sure. So up front, we've got our legendary steel four and a half post of this one. Um, this is a non winch compatible bar. Um, again, it's used by a, it's a 50 mil tube. Obviously, we've got our two end posts, we've got our center post, and then basically the two on the outside. Complementing that, we've got the dual steel double side rail and step, our legendary ones that protect the sides of the guards and also uh, stop car doors hitting the side of the car as well. So that's the joys of having the side steps and rails on. They sure work. Up front, um, behind this, nice protective mesh we've got two australian made genesis led driving lights so the light force ones of yeah. course made here in australia still Mo our most popular spotlight definitely yeah yep by far i've been for years yep definitely so 1100 meters down the road at one lux so it's quite a substantial amount of light too and being aussie made they make spread covers for these as well so you can you know you can change those depending on you know which way you, you like to drive at night so yeah. to speak what do you reckon's going on here? Got some cool stuff happening. This is this is where it all happens, Mark. I love this sort of stuff. And you know, thanks to, to Trent, one of our lead fitters, he has done a remarkable job with this one. So we've we've fitted and installed a 105 amp hour um, deep cycle dual battery system under bonnet. So um, with the tray, obviously we use our battery trays. We've got um, another tra another plate over here that houses all the what they call midi fuses. So essentially what these are, this is easy access for a client. Um, should they, you know, reverse polarity something or something go wrong or short somewhere, yep. you've got good access and the client can change those fuses yep. just with a simple um, yep. click, click of the top. Um, as you can see there, it's all mounted to the firewall, it's all neatly, everything's um, twin sheathed, it's conduited, it's shrink tubed on there as well. Um, and as you can see, all the, the location of where the wiring goes is, we try and keep it as invisible as possible. Yeah. Again, it stops a lot of, you know, rubbing out on wires and, you know, things to go wrong. So if everything's secure like this, you're never, ever going to have any dual battery and system And you're, you're keeping it away from the heat. It's separate, they're separated a little bit as well. So you, you're just cutting down that heat generation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, it's a super neat job. Um, obviously all the wine runs in behind the battery here before it goes down the front. And then you can see up behind the um, grill here. So the, this section's we obviously left it out so you can see where the charger mounts, but it's on a red arc um, grill mount bracket and then the charger mounts to that. So everything's done, it's kept cool, you, you know, that this charger's not copping, you know, engine heat, so it's yeah. running at 100% capacity all the time. Um, obviously you can link those to lithium and, you know, all sorts of other different batteries that you can put in place of this one. Um, but this one's set obviously to the wet cell deep cycle, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see all the wiring down that's, that runs on the top of the radiator support panel and then down along that bar. Um, it's all neat, zip tied and P-clamped in there nice and neatly too. So, now it looks, looks really nice job that one. So. Yeah, it's excellent. Here we extra fuel on board now? <laughs> Absolutely, we have. So this one here, we've got, we've put in the 150 litre Brown Davis, um, long range tank. Um, two mil aluminized steel, obviously powder coated again. Um, one of the joys with Brown Davis, again, we're looking at an Australian made product. Um, one of the good things too that I love about steel auxiliary tanks is the fact that we do have this little drain bung here. So if you get a bit of crook fuel or you put a little bit of water or something like that in there, you've got access, we can undo that bung and drain that water out. So that's one of the really, really good things with a long range yeah. tank, especially Sometimes when you're You do get that. crappy fuel from the bottom of the Bowser yep. tanks. Yep. And they can have more water, algae, all that sort yep. of stuff really messes up your, your diesel. Yeah, correct, exactly. So that's a, that's a great thing that Brown Davis did there. Obviously, this one replaces the factory tank that was in the vehicle uh, originally. So basically, we just yeah, unbolted that one out and we bolted the big one in there. So Very yeah, neat. Very, very good neat. investment too, especially if you're touring. Also, it's strong. You know, it's kind of curved as well. So it's not protruding too much below your, 
your parts of your your, your, your chassis or your motor, your yeah. drive, cha drive yeah. shaft. Exactly right. Exactly. So you want to talk about the suspension, Steve? We've we can we can probably look at the back a bit there. With, I can get a bit of light on it for you if you want. Yeah, for leaves. sure. So. Yeah. Essentially, in this one, we've got fitted the levels upgrade in this one. Um, basically, um, the shock absorbers, you know, the, they're a great warranty on those. They've got three years, 70,000 K warranty. Leaf springs in there as well. Um, you're looking at a five year unlimited kilometre warranty on those. So. And these are the Australian, Australian made springs? Yes, correct. They're made in Newcastle um, still to this day, and it's just it's great to see. Well, they, they use some interesting methodology that's probably top secret, but it's like they would have done long time ago but labor intensive but old yeah. school sometimes is the best school absolutely yep and and like you say you, you when you're spending money on suspension one of the biggest things you want to look for is versatility which you can get out of the levels pack because of the way they manufacture their leaf springs um, essentially you know it'll pick up the the leaves on the bottom of the pack as it requires so as the weight's applied to it it'll it uses that that yes. part of the pack yeah Yet when you unload, it utilises the top half of the it's pack. It's a good little design, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very, very smart. I don't know if we can see much well. from the front, or do you want to go from the other well, side of the hoist? I think, yeah, I think we'll bring it down. Okay. Here we are at the front. So basically, you can see in here what we've done is we've obviously replaced the factory coil spring and the shock absorber um, to the upgraded levels one, of course. What we've also done here is we've changed the factory upper control arm, and we've used a Blackhawk upper control arm. So. There's a, there's a lot of you know talk and don't need to do it, you do need to do it. Well, from an honest point of view and for someone that's driven vehicles with, with and without, it's a must do. Essentially what that arm does is because we've lifted the vehicle that 50 mil, the factory upper control arm drops down with the height of the front. Now what the factory arm does is it pulls in closer to the chassis, which brings the ball joint much closer to the chassis, which when you're trying to wheel along it, you can't get this tire to sit flat on the road. It runs out of adjustment. So what we've done is we put the, we use the um, Blackhawk arm because it, re it uses a replica um, ball joint and chassis bushing, so as per the OE ones. So if something you know, did go wrong or in 10 years time the client you know, had to replace them, you can replace them with the genuine parts, so, which is really, really you know, good, especially if you're in a remote area. This upper control arm is also um, manufactured 11 mil longer and it's also got another one and a half degrees of caster built into it. So what that does is as that arm droops down from the lift, this ball joint sits within the factory perimeters, except it's just pulled back a little bit. So what it essentially does, when this vehicle's wheel aligned, they can do, use the eccentric adjustments underneath it and allow this tire to sit dead flat on the road. Well, it saves you wearing your tire out. <clears throat> Correct, that's exactly right. Yeah, and it sure also... That's right, and it also gives you the factory steering, like the factory handling. So you don't want light steering or any of that. You, that's what removes it all. Which is so perfect. That's why we do it and recommend it. What about these clear view mirrors? They're a beautiful looking mirror. They are. indicator and everything. Yep, absolutely. So this is the clear view um, next gen mirror. So you can see on the top, it's got the flat glass mirror and then we've got a convex mirror on the lower oh, right department. Oh, right on, for your so, smile. Yeah, correct. And it also works really well, especially when you're towing, because you can, you know, you can still adjust your blind spot, but you can have the inside of the mirror just hits the caravan wheel. So it's very, very good investment for anyone towing or having wide. You, you know, use this for your your vehicle when you're towing the van. Love it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So these these have got the three stage telescopic mechanism. I don't know if I can pull it out from here, wow. but you can see there. So it pulls out um, in three separate three separate settings, so to speak. But the good thing with Clearview is you're not restricted by those three settings so if say if that was too much you can bring this mirror in sit it there and it won't move yeah now, the, the thing i really like about these is they're made in australia absolutely so yes what, how many great. things are made in australia that are out of plastic these days it's just really good when you see that yeah. made here yes yeah. that's right so again this one's got the indicator and there's a little puddle light it underneath oh, here as really? well so how cool is that? so yeah so <clears throat> Then in front of that, obviously, you can see the Safari Snorkel. Again, we're talking Australian made. There's another one. So made in Australia, they're made in Melbourne. Um, they're really, really good snorkel. They, they get the, you know, the cooler air to the air box. They do everything they need to without leaking. Um, you know, they're just, they're, they're a performance enhancer. You know, if you're doing water crossings, yes, they stop that as well. But the, one of the biggest things with the, with the snorkels these days is your air yes. pickup. Yeah. Your air pickup actually sits right here from factory. Yeah, so it's behind really, that guard liner. If you, 
you're getting all that dust if you're off the bitumen. Yep. It's just rotating. So it's really working your air filter. So I'm straddling your air filter and clogging it up. So that's why you've always got to blow air filters out until you fit a snorkel. It, it, it prolongs your filter life by you know, a substantial amount of time, depending you, on how much travel you're on. If you dust the motor, you may not get any warranty as well. That's like expensive. I've heard of the story in that case. Yes, that's um, expensive. So yeah. peace of mind again. It is. And the thing with an Australian made snorkel is the fitting templates are always Spot immaculate. On. Yeah, they are. They're perfect. Yeah. So easy fitment. You know, everything sits square. It looks good. So there we go. That's this really good dual cab hybrid. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, it is. It's a good build, this one. So yeah, really thanks good. for taking us through it. That's um, okay. It's really interesting about those control arms and suspension. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. A, a lot of... I think most people tend to leave them out, but when you hear about what they do, yep. you say shit. You just got to do it. Yeah, for that <laughs> for that little bit extra, um, and when you do a suspension kit, I always like to do a complete suspension kit. That way, everything works together as yeah. well. It's all about keep re you know retaining the factory vehicle handling, if not improving it, yep. um, and then obviously having the suspension you know adjusted accordingly to the vehicle weights yeah. too. That's where sure. another thing go wrong. So. All right, well that's our Friday fit, yep. and um, thanks to everyone who worked so hard too get this out and fit it and I think they've done a pretty good job. They have. I think we'll go and see if there's any beers in that fridge. <laughs> I don't think it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> I checked.